Hi, this is Steve Palladino from Palladino Power Project, and I'm bringing you a, a video uh, to uh, to introduce you to a uh, customized, individualized uh, interval power target calculator that will be on Final Search. Um, the uh, the release is uh, is. Scheduled to be on June 1st, 2021, uh, possibly June 2nd, but uh, likely June 1st, 2021. Um, and the intention of the calculator is to allow someone to individualize their, their interval part power targets uh, based on both their critical power, or FTP, and their reserve work capacity. Uh, and I'm going to go into reserve work capacity so you have a better understanding of that. Um, but there are other uh, names for reserve work capacity. Uh, uh, classically, it's W prime. Um, uh, in WKO, it's it's called FRC or functional reserve capacity. Um, I prefer using the term reserve work capacity. Um, in any case, what the calculator does is it, it takes uh, a, an input of your critical power and uh, let's say it's a uh, 16.0 uh, kilojoules for the reserve work capacity. It requires a critical power or FTP entry and a reserve work capacity entry and you then calculate paces and it will produce your uh, your power target for each of these segments of uh, intervals or types of intervals, relative intensity, so to speak. Um, again, it requires a valid critical power or functional threshold power and a valid reserve work capacity estimate. That means that the individual has to have performed an ACP test or they have had to uh, fully optimize their uh, power duration curve model in the WKO environment or the Golden Cheetah environment. Um, Stride uh, does not currently release uh, or uh, produce or output a reserve work capacity estimate from uh, uh, in their environment on their power duration curve model or from their power duration curve model. So again, you need a recent valid CP test that has produced a CP and reserve work capacity estimate or a fully optimized power duration curve model from either WKO, in which you're using FTP and FRC from the model, or uh, you're using Golden Cheetah, a power duration curve model, in which case you're using the CP and W prime estimate from that platform. You input these and it'll produce these particular um, interval power targets for these uh, different different um, duration uh, of intervals. I'm going to come back to that and show you some examples and, and detail that for you. But first, uh, what I want to do is I just want to shift to some slides and just explain reserve work capacity and why, why it's important. Um, so reserve work capacity is the amount of work in kilojoules the amount of work that can be done in excess of FTP or critical power. So for example, for this individual with a critical power of 300 watts and a reserve work capacity of 16 kilojoules, um, they can uh, exert 300 watts for their FTP CP, but when they go over that, they have this finite um, reservoir of of work that they can do. And so the amount of how that translates to power is dependent on the time. So for example, one minute, for one minute maximum effort, 
um, the uh, that reserve that 16 kilojoule reserve work capacity will provide an additional 267 watts on top of that 300 watts so that the one minute power for this individual will be about 567 watts using up that entire reservoir of reserve work capacity. Similarly, for three minutes, um, it, uh, that reserve work capacity will provide an additional 89 watts on top of that uh, 300 watts. So the three minute max for this individual will be 389 watts because they're using that reserve work capacity for a longer period of time. So it's a less, uh, it's, it's a lower amount of uh, absolute power on top of the reserve work capacity, but you're doing it for three minutes. And, and just extrapolating further, for that same individual, they're going to, uh, if they're burning up a whole 16 kilojoules of reserve work capacity in a five minute maximum effort, um, it's going to give them an extra 53 watts on top of their 300 watts of uh, FDPCP. So this five minute power will be about 353 watts, as you can see here. Now, if you're looking at this, you can sort of uh, appreciate that it uh, sort of looks like something that we're quite familiar with, a power duration curve. Um, and I'd like to uh, now draw upon this slide that uh, from data generated by Dr. Coggin. Um, uh, and it's based on cyclists, but it's still applicable to this dis discussion. And, and what uh, Dr. Coggin did is had a, a, uh, a large um, population of cyclists and was looking at the variance of power as a percent of FTP. And you can see it sort of formulates a power duration curve. Um, and at FTP, you might have, you know, you're 100% FTP for all of these individuals in the population, 100% is 100%. Um, but as you go to the left of uh, functional threshold power on the power duration curve, you can see that there's more and more variance. So that some individuals might uh, there, well, we'll use uh, this right in here as an example, somewhere um, about a minute long. Um, some individuals um, are able to come close to 300% of functional threshold power for one minute, while others are less than 200% at for one minute. Why? Because the, the magnitude of the individuals reserve work capacity varies across this population. Some of them have a big reserve work capacity, in which case they're able to achieve a higher percentage of FTP. Some of them have a smaller reserve work capacity, in which case they're only able to uh, get a smaller percentage of their FTP for that same duration. Um, so this is a, a great slide that helps, helps um, depict the variance in uh, reserve work capacity. As you uh, come further and further left of FTP on the power duration curve, the impact of that variable duration, uh, variable size of reserve work capacity becomes greater and greater. So consequently, because of that reserve work capacity, variance across individuals, when you start getting into shorter duration intervals, it becomes more impactful in what the appropriate target is. You can see if I'm prescribing intervals at 100% uh, of FTP for say 15 minutes, um, you know, that, that's, it's, there's not a lot of variance there. Um, but as you get into three minute intervals, Five minute, even five minute intervals, one minute intervals, the, the variance in the reserve work capacity across individuals impacts the appropriate target more and more. Let me, uh, let me demonstrate that just a little bit further. What, what we have here is we have got two individuals that are uh, have the same identical functional threshold power or critical power, 300 watts. 
but one has a 16 watt, a 16 kilojoule reserve work capacity. The other has a reserve work capacity of eight kilojoules, so smaller. Um, this is a, a bigger reserve work capacity individual. This is a little bit more uh, closer, closer to normal uh, for runners, that is. Uh, these numbers seem small for if you're a cyclist, but for runners, they, they typically are a little bit smaller, the reserve work capacity. Uh, so for three-minute max, with this individual, same, same critical power, but for the maximum power uh, that they can achieve with that 8 kilojoule reserve work capacity is 344 watts. You can see it's a smaller amount. It's almost double here. Well, it is double reserve work capacity, so the amount of power is about double. And the amount of power over reserve work capacity, over functional threshold power. Let me restate that since I, I flubbed a little bit. So because the reserve work capacity is double and you're going the same duration, three minutes, the person has the same functional threshold power, critical power, but they're going to get a twice as much power above reserve, uh, above critical power than this individual. And so they're going to achieve 389 watts for three, uh, three minute max, 89 watts above uh, th uh, their functional threshold power, where this one is half that about uh, 344 watts above their, their uh, functional threshold power. Um, so same, same exact functional threshold power, critical power, but they're going to get different maxes because uh, for three minutes because of the different size of their reserve work capacity. Um, and to illustrate it even further, this individual, uh, their three-minute max is 115%. And this goes, goes back to this slide here where we're going to have some, some lower percentages of FTP, some higher percentage of FTP because of that variance in the reserve work capacity. This one, the, the, the lower reserve work capacity individual, 8 kilojoules, their three-minute power is going to be about 115% of their uh, critical power, functional threshold power, whereas... The larger reserve work capacity individuals, 16 kilojoules, their three-minute max is going to be about 130%. So the problem comes in that if we start prescribing intervals based on CP, as we go again, as we go further and left, that, vary, that variance becomes greater and greater, more impactful on interval targets. So if we were to prescribe three-minute work intervals at 106% of FTP CP, which is a common prescription, that's about 318 watts for these two individuals because they have the same critical power, functional threshold power. It's 318 watts. However, for this individual with the 389 max that 318 watts represents only 82% of their maximum three-minute power. Whereas this one, it's 92% of maximum. It's just not the same interval. You're prescribing the same percentage of FTP, but in terms of their max and how much, how much uh, uh, of their, their individual reserve work capacity you're burning down in that three-minute interval, it's going to be different. It's, it's, it's just going to be different. So this prompted uh, this, this model that I created for calculating interval power targets based on both input of the individual's valid critical power or functional threshold power and valid reserve work capacity. Um, so... In, in this, and hopefully you can pick up this fine print. Um, actually, let me uh, see if I can get that just a little bit bigger there for you. And um, so for this individual, um, we would look over the, for a three-minute interval, 
This interval would have a power target of 322 to 344 watts, which is about 107 to 115 percent of their critical power. But let's take go back to our example. Let's change this. Let's make this eight uh, kilojoules of reserve work capacity. Now we can see for three minute intervals for this individual, the power targets 311 to 322 uh, watts. Um, for 104 to 107% of, of critical power. Um, different power targets, but relative to their individuals, their individual reserve work capacity, the power is the power target is more appropriate. It's more individualized to this particular individual. So if you were to be prescribed, um, say, uh, let's say you're um, eight times one minute and 15 seconds um, intervals with uh, two minute recoveries, you would, and, and you happen to fall into this, your 300 watts and eight kilojoules, your target would be 322 to 344 watts, um, 107 to 115% of, of FTP for that individual. If you were doing eight times one minute and 15 seconds with two minutes of recovery and you had a 300 uh, watt FTP critical power, but 16 kilojoule um, reserve work capacity, the target falling in that one minute to 130 band here, the max, intensive max aerobic power or reserve work capacity type intervals, your target would be 344 watts to 389 watts, or 115 to 130%. So I, I, what I have here is I have all these different bands uh, for near threshold intervals, uh, roughly seven to 10 minutes long, and it'll produce power target for that. Supra threshold intervals of five to six minutes long, it'll produce that. Max aerobic power intervals of two minutes and 30 seconds to three minutes long, it produces that. Um, and an intensive max aerobic power, it, getting into some reserve work capacity um, stimulus it, of one minute to 130 um, duration, it'll produce those uh, targets for you as well. And if you're doing just um, Reserve work capacity stimulus, uh, what other people might call anaerobic intervals, um, but I call them reserve work capacity because they really get at that. Um, you, it was shorter interval durations, but very high power. 30, uh, 30 seconds to 45 seconds for that, uh, that uh, interval type, and it'll produce those targets for you as well. So again, there you have it. It's in final surge. Um, likely as of June 1st, 2021. Um, and it'll be an available calculator on Final Surge. All you need to do is uh, input your recent valid critical power or functional threshold power and recent reserve work capacity. Again, from a CP test or from WKO, uh, MFTP, and functional... Uh, reserve capacity, FRC, or Golden Cheetah, CP, and W prime from one of the Golden Cheetah models. Input your, your values and you get individualized interval power targets. Um, so hopefully that helps. It gives you a little bit of an idea. I'll probably produce another uh, video um, going into how to apply it into your structured workouts. Uh, but I wanted to review this calculator and a little bit of the background of it and how to use it. Um, thank you for watching. We'll see you in future uh, uh, videos. Uh, thank you again.